Hey friends, we are back with part three of making a journal cover out of a box and I want to show you just a couple ways that this can go as far as your finishing process. I'm ready to adhere some fabric onto my box journal right here. This is a box journal that I did a while back and I just used packing paper and I scrunched it up and I put it on this journal and I think it came out really good. You can see you can see how well it came out. Um, the, the first person that I ever saw use packing paper for a journal cover is Jenny Belly. And Jenny Belly is also the first person that I ever saw do a cereal box journal. And you, I'll look up those videos. You've got to see them. <laughs> it's remarkable what, what that girl did with a cereal box. But you can go this way and cover your journal with some packing paper, some scrunched up packing paper. Or you can go this way and cover your journal with a t-shirt. This was a t-shirt that my guy was no longer, well, it, he never wore it. It still had the tags on it hanging in the closet. And I said, hey, I'm going to make this into a book. And he said, okay. So um, this is a journal where you're just using a t-shirt or you know part of a dress or whatever you can recycle all kinds of things into journal covers the journal cover that we're going to do right now is a fabric journal cover this is my personal flow journal I'll show you guys what I did this morning it was really cool I took some of my uh, homemade clay beads and added a tea tag on the spine of it and it just turned out really pretty I thought it was so cool alright to get started on this we need a little bit of adhesive I've never tried the spray adhesives I do not know how they work um, for me what works is a little bit of Elmer's glue and typically I just water this down a little bit so I've got some water here in my big brush and I've got clean water sorry I bumped the camera and just put a little bit of that in there and then I've got a popsicle stick and I'm gonna give it a stir I use popsicle sticks for stirrers I use popsicle sticks for scorers they're great things to have. Have laying about. All right. So there we go. That is the, this is our adhesive that we're going to put on our fabric. Choose a piece of fabric that doesn't require you to fiddle with it much. Now when I say fiddle with it much, it means that don't get into some sort of complicated pattern that has to be exactly straight and all that because you'll 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 drive yourself crazy if you're trying to get everything perfect. I am the imperfect crafter, so uh, I have to have something that is kind of um, you know that that doesn't have straight edges and that kind of thing. I'm going to turn this light on while we do that. This, okay. I have chosen my fabric, and this is some fabric from my beautiful friend Jeannie, and she she's my art angel. She's one of my art angels. I am a very lucky girl. I have lots and lots of art angels. This is some green fabric. You can see that it has kind of a lavender and cream colored butterfly on it. I just situated my journal book, my book, onto the fabric. I wanted to center, or not even center, just kind of try and get this entire image on the front of the book. So. If I do it like that, then that's going to put the image on the front and make it look make it look super nice. I'm starting with a wet brush. I'm going to dip it in my adhesive and I'm going to brush it on the book. I do not uh, some some people sand their books to make things stick. I don't typically do that. And I don't want to get too far off here because this is the pattern that I want. So I just want to be sure that I'm sticking that down in the right spot. 
I have ironed my fabric so it's nice and straight. It's crease free. Now I'm picking up this side. Put some glue here. If you are working with a really sheer sort of fabric, you may want to paint your journal book. And that's totally up to you. I, I tend to not paint them because um, A, it just makes everything too wet. And remember we've talked about not getting things wet. Though if you want to paint your journal cover, that's kind of up to you. If, if you want to do that, then you know, go ahead and do it. Um, just be careful about getting things too wet. All right. So that is looking pretty good. I like that. Looking pretty good. It adheres adhered nicely. Give it a few more smooshes. Make sure the spine looks good, and it does. All right, now I'm going to do the corners of this journal. And the way that I do them is I cut off just a small section. I keep these because these are what I use for other projects. So, you know, when you cut your corners, I think the big trick to doing this is not to get the corners too close because if you get them too close, you won't have you won't have a good fold on your corners. So there we go. It's not very neat right there. Right, and one more over here. And y'all know this is not like the end all be all of you got to do it just like this. Do do what do what you want to do. You know, do what makes your heart happy when you start putting these things together. The way that I like to adhere this is I like to start with this fold. And I'm putting some of my glue down. And I'm also putting glue on the fabric right here. And with a generous dose on the corners. I was really happy to find Elmer's on sale. It's like, woohoo! All right. Now, I'm going to fold this up. Just like that. Get a little rub with my hand to make sure that all the bumps are out or it's as bump free as possible. I use an X-Acto knife and I tuck my corners in right here. Just tuck those in. I am not a fine corner maker, y'all. Lots of people are a whole lot better at this than me, but this is just how I do it. I'm going to bring my adhesive onto these parts of the book. Remember not to let it, everything get too wet. Right, and then see that made a nice corner right there. I'm going to pull this on over. Squeeze it with my finger. Right. Now I'm going to do this one. These books make really nice gifts, no matter if you're using, you know, if you're making one. I've done these books for wedding gifts, um, engagement gifts, baby gifts, all kinds of things. It's so nice to be able to keep something out of the landfill, you know, to make a recycled object, to create something beautiful out of a piece of trash. It's very it's inspiring. I love, I love doing it. All right. Now, there we go. Right. 
And there we have it, you guys. I will finish this up. I also wanted to note that when you have a place like this, that is okay because generally what I do with these, well, what I always do with these is I put a book plate inside the journal. Um, here, I'll show you. So this is a book plate, and that goes inside the journal, and it kind of covers up any of your edges that that um, aren't exactly perfect. I had a couple of scraps left over from this project. What I like to do with my scraps, now this is a little, this is too small to do anything with. What I like to do is make um, make fabric pages for my journals. So what I'm going to do here is just give this a cut and then I'm going to fold it just like that. Not going to be perfect. Be a, a nice fabric page to lace inside a signature. So I've got a couple of those. The other thing that I like to do with scrap material We've got our corners saved over here, but with this kind of scrap, I like to cut strips. Sorry, y'all, I'm standing up and it's, it's kind of hard to see. Doing my best to cut a straight line, but that's kind of impossible. All right, so you have these strips right here. And these are what I use to make, uh, I make uh, Seagrid Soto inspired uh, boho beads. And I also make these hairy paper clips that go in my, in my junk journals. So you can see, hang on, I'll find a fabric one for you. There we go. There's one right there. There's a fabric hairy paper clip. So I use all kind I use up every scrap of fabric. Every scrap of fabric <laughs> gets used. It's just so precious and so beautiful that I uh, I just really do like to use it up. All right, guys, I'm going to finish up this little journal and I hope that you've enjoyed this series. If you have, give me a thumbs up and uh, a comment is always really nice to see. So I'm going to finish this one up. Um, if you guys are interested in carrying this on, I can show you how to use a brad to, to make a closure for your book and also how to bind the book. So just let me know if you're interested in carrying this whole series any further. Thanks for watching, y'all. Talk to you soon.